welcome back and good morning on this gonna be a steamy hot day I guess right now it's very humid it's in the high 70s it's early in the morning uh, but I can feel it in the air it's gonna be getting hot and uncomfortable but I've got a lot of work to do that I want to show you a little bit about and uh, how it's done I'm working on cutting uh, six posts the four corner posts and the two center posts that reside in between and um, they're the most intricate and most detailed components of the entire pavilion project. Uh, the girt, which runs between, you know, three, three basic components make up a bent, which is the, uh, a segment uh, at any uh, timber frame or post and beam constru construction. And um, so one bent consists of two support posts and uh, one girt that runs between us, the tie beam that runs between them. And um, the joint at the, at the end of the, the girt is a uh, half, half wedged dovetail. And uh, it's a massive joint that's uh, secured in a way that uh, basically it's, it's, it's overly uh, strong, uh, very secure. It uses, a, it uses a wedge and dovetail to uh, secure it. And then on top of that, uh, oak one one inch oak pegs are driven so eventually you'll get to see all that we're quite a ways from that stage but uh, I'll show you how we cut these posts and some of the uh, some of the uh, process involved today um, I hope I can work outside most of the day but when it gets into the high 90s outside here in this uh, you know unrelenting Sun uh, I, I, I basically have to retreat so we'll try to get as much done today as possible. I'm going to have my tea and then we'll get right into it. Well, let's take a close look at the tools. First of all, at the very heart of it, a uh, timber frame requires timber framing chisels. On the right side there, that's a uh, Robert Sorby framing chisel. It's an inch and a half wide and uh, that's probably a good all-purpose uh, width. It's uh, it cuts fairly quickly. You don't. You're not driving too broad a blade in, and uh, these are razor sharp. Uh, these these uh, chisels. I mean, they're as sharp as a straight razor. You can shave with them, and they have to be maintained that way in order to work efficiently. And on the uh, left side, that's a, a Japanese framing slick. I like this uh, style with the long handle. You can really uh, you can really put some weight into it. You don't you don't hammer these. These uh, these simply slide the uh, shavings off as fine or as heavy as you want with just a little bit of pressure. And uh, I've got an old block plane there. I've had that for many years, probably close to 50 years. And uh, I've kept it in good condition. Uh, but a block plane is essential for uh, finishing off some of your joints, the tenons, uh, to, to uh, finalize the uh, fit and flatten things out. And of course, You've got to have a uh, carpenter's square, and uh, the carpenter's square. You know, for for those of you who are not aware, a carpenter's square uh, is is useful for so many uh, things that's done in carpentry. Uh, especially, it's got it's got layout uh, tables on it for uh, laying out rafters and uh, the various types of rafters on roofs. Um, and uh, right there is a, a speed square. I use that when I'm uh, setting up my circular saw, my uh, skill saw, to uh, make uh, cuts. I'm I'm not going to be a purist and use a uh, hand saw throughout this process. It's just too much to do, and uh, you know it's 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 going to get done with just as nicely with uh, the mechanical part of it. And there's a combination square. That combination square is vital. That's your gauge. That. Uh, determines whether your tenons, your mortises are uh, straight and true and uh, the correct depth. And this is, uh, this is really such an important uh, part of this project for me. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's so time consuming and uh, laborious to uh, cut each mortise uh, by hand. And this really reduces the work effort uh, and makes it much, much easier. Uh, we'll show you how this thing works. This is a Makita chain mortiser. Um, they're fairly costly, but um, because the market is very, very uh, big for these, uh, 
it, these these are easily sold after you get done with a project so I bought this one new at a fairly good price and uh, as you can see it's got a very aggressive uh, chain I tightened that chain yesterday uh, for the fr after the first uh, after the first hour or so of usage uh, the chain just like any chainsaw the chain starts to uh, set and uh, the pins start to set in it and uh, it loosens up so um, tightening it was very very simple uh, inside that inside that yellow cover there's a uh, simple uh, it's very simple screw that uh, tightens with a uh, drift pin and it clamps securely to the work surface uh, we'll show you how that works so there's the uh, work on the post that I'm uh, completing today um, this this hole right here uh, that's the uh, that mortise right there is uh, got to go all the way through. This is an eight-inch by eight-inch uh, actual dimension beam, and it's uh, not planed. I'll probably uh, belt sand it and uh, give it a little bit nicer finish. But uh, these are these are not nominal. These are uh, full dimension, and uh, the eastern white pine. So eastern white pine is uh, not, is noted uh, throughout New England uh, for for being very strong uh, and it's and it resists bending uh, in the middle this, this can, these beams can span 12 uh, 20 feet unsupported without uh, without sagging so I'm not going to be spanning that far uh, it's going to be uh, more like about 12 feet uh, open span so I've got to cut that I've got to cut that uh, mortise all the way through the chain mortise it won't reach quite eight inches so I'm going to cut it from the back side I did four inches I leave it set for four inches because uh, all my actually four and a half inches because all my uh, this right here is for uh, to receive a wind brace uh, a 45 degree wind brace that measures uh, four by eight so uh, that's uh, going to be cut into each of the beams uh, each of these posts uh, and the the posts the posts are uh, really I've got six posts and three different styles so I've got uh, two uh, center posts and I've got uh, two sets of diagonal uh, corner posts that uh, will have their own separate uh, layout of uh, wind braces so let's get to it of course I'm working from my sketch up plans here and uh, this gives me my cutting dimensions uh, these are this this particular joint is used in each of the uh, posts and uh, so one thing I want to make sure of is that uh, I'm on the same page when I go to cut the back side so I'll always uh, measure measure three times and cut once that's you're dealing with uh, there's no reversing on this so I'm down three inches from the top on my um, mortise and the actual the actual distance when I cut this when I cut this mortise here this mortise has to be cut before I make this uh, shelf cut because this shelf cut here changes the uh, angle this the back the, the bottom side of this mortise is going to be cut at a downward slope so what I've got to do is I've got to cut this same I've got to cut this same hole on the back side and then by hand I'll be chiseling out that that slope I can't cut all the way through because I'll be coming out at the bottom and I'll lose my dovetail so down from the top it's 16 and a half inches by three inches I made it a little bit higher than three inches here because I want to make sure that I have plenty of clearance when I go to slide the dovetail in it goes in from the top and then drop down and uh, as you can see I've got some I've got some these are curious looking marks here uh, that's so I can locate my uh, line because the line that I the line that I draw is not with a pencil I draw a line with uh, basically it's a it's a box cutter and that allows me to make a very precise line that uh, I don't have to worry about whether I'm on the, the uh, which side of the pencil line I'm on so this is much more precise and um, we got to flip this over. This is one heavy puppy. Uh, I've got to uh, use my I use my tractor 
bucket to uh, tote these around the backyard here and uh, those straps of those straps are uh, more than sufficient for uh, lifting this and then some so always got to be very careful you don't roll it off here and I've got to be sure that uh, Yeah. And never get your hand under anything. You want to make sure that uh, your hands are clear before you uh, flip it over. This post isn't as bad as the uh, some of the beams that will follow. Uh, my girt that goes between these two posts, between two of each of these posts, is going to be uh, eight by twelve, and uh, it's going to span. Uh, 18 feet so that's a big one uh, these are uh, 8 by 8 by 12 feet, uh, 12 feet so we're going to lay out this we're going to lay out this mortise on the back side here now of course it might sound a little bit uh, silly but I got to make sure that I'm on the correct face here so I've got my shelf cut underneath and I'll be meeting that mortise from the top um, Believe it or not, you know, you, 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 can, you can very easily make the wrong cut on the wrong part of a post and you'll have to scrap the whole thing. There's no fixing it. So, we're all set and I've got to make a uh, mortise that's three inches from the top. Using my knife, I'll cut across the, across the grain deeply. Just press it in. You don't want to draw it because uh, this is not being guided, so I just make a mark. And now I can put a tick mark there where I'm going to be cutting out the wood so I can find my using a carpenter's pencil. You can sharpen these so easily with these, uh, these uh, chisels. All you have to do is just pull this back and it sharpens it up very, very nicely. So we want 3 inches by 15 inches. Again, just drop it down into the grain and don't don't make a mark don't make a line because we're going to do that with a uh, framing square so before i lose that i'll make a tick mark with my carpenter's pencil so i can find it and it doesn't get lost or mistaken for some other and now framing squares are in twelfths and sixteenths so we want to make sure that I'm on my sixteenth side which is on this side here it's really not that important in this particular situation because I'm measuring in in whole inches so um, I don't have to be too concerned that way uh, I gotta find my find my line and this is an eight inch this is an eight inch chunk of wood and you can see it's exactly eight inches. The mill did a nice job. So the center of eight is four. I want to make a two inch wide mortise. So at five inches, make a make a mark and color that with my color that with my pencil and one at three again mark that with my pencil so I don't lose it and now continuing up here do the same thing three and five And of course the uh, mortising tool will uh, follow along very nicely. I'll show you how that works in a moment. So I've got my, I've got my layout lines. Now I just simply connect the dots. This is uh, kind of tricky. The knife wants to follow the uh, grain. You've got to hold that 
that framing square down tightly and do not do not go deep because it's going to move that it's going to move that framing square instead just make gentle passes making sure you stay on and it doesn't move on you one or two and straight down don't don't wedge the uh, knife underneath or from the outside just drag that straight along and that will make a nice visible line and we'll do the same thing by following that line this is a, the body of this framing square is two inches and the tongue is one and a half inches so it's a very hint not only that but it's a, not only a good gauge to uh, cut them with but this makes a perfect gauge to drop into the hole to make sure that I have the uh, correct width so now I've got to also make my cross and in this case this this one this uh, side of the body is up in the air so I want to use this side this time of day it's nice because I don't have the sun and causing shadows that shows up nicer on the uh, cross cut side cross grain now this is going to be turned around uh, working from the other side but this is, this is a very sharp chain and uh, it's a specially made chain for these chain mortises it's, a, it's, a, it's similar to a uh, to a chainsaw uh, but it's, a, it's, it's much more intricate these are very expensive chains and uh, daily I want to check and make sure that my my chain has some some slack but uh, carefully turn it and make sure that uh, it has free travel without you don't want it to slap and uh, the adjustment for that is very simple right here there's a uh, there's a hole in this in this bolt and that turns with a it, it's about a uh, 3 16 inch diameter uh, pin that you put in there and you can just turn it so let's turn this around this is heavy it weighs about 40 something pounds But uh, the weight is very, very important to keep this thing steady. First thing I want to verify is that my cut depth is set correctly. This is set for four and a half inches, so it's going to cut through to the other, to the other uh, side of that mortise. And um, I've got my uh, chain positioned laterally here so I just clamp this straight down it's a very firm clamp and there's a on the back side here is a uh, handle that uh, gives you your bait you bring it up you bring it up against the wood and it's spring loaded and when you press that down it tightens it up really good um, make sure that my make sure that my chain is positioned going straight up and down uh, you don't want to begin uh, with that angled this machine rotates in it has three positions so you can maximize your uh, you maximize your cuts from one clamped position by cutting once twice and three times and then you move your with this handle you rotate it uh, and bring bring the chain where you want so my chain now is uh, I can take a look down through and there's a gauge here that I can line up with my top line with my my uh, right hand side line and uh, I'm checking to make sure that I'm gonna land on that on that uh, scribed mark so let's start it up and begin and it's got a it's got a lock Um, 
got to be careful because this could pull when it reaches the back side and you don't want it to pull down through. Okay, we're going to rotate it. Now, on the, on the far left hand side here, we'll do it right now so we don't forget. We want to make a uh, cut on that left mark with the chisel because the chain is pulling up on the left hand side and that will tear out wood. So we'll make, we'll make a preliminary cut with the chisel. And uh, this is a neoprene mallet. It's um, 30 ounce. You don't have to. You don't have to do much. Basically, you're just cutting that. You're just cutting that end grain there, so that when the chain comes up through, it doesn't tear the wood. We've got the blade swung over. is the one that takes the longest because it's cutting wood on both sides. So now we rotate it to the far left. Now we'll turn it about five turns and uh, release the clamp, allow it to come straight back. Never make that first cut with the uh, tool, with the chain at an angle because you'll have severe, cut, uh, severe kickback. So we begin. Here we go. Now we'll just one make one more turn here. And yes, I need to get my glasses on. It really doesn't throw wood in your direction. It throws it most to the left and uh, upward. But always when you're working with power tools like this, things can happen that are unexpected. So I put my glasses on and I don't want to descend into that. This is going to be a finished side, so I don't want to descend into that and make an ugly cut. So we'll make a test cut. And move it up in increments. on that line.
Now we just release the clamp and uh, slide it over. I can bring my zero gauge to the end of that, the beginning of that cut. Overlap it a little bit. Now I just observed that my chain has gotten loose again. It's a new, it's a new machine and this chain is going to continually loosen up until those pins become set. So, so all I have to do is just uh, using a 3 16 inch, that might be quarter inch, I think that's quarter inch. Um, I just turn this, turn this screw until that chain tightens up nicely. And I've still got some slack there. I should have, I should have enough slack that I can pull it away and see daylight between the chain and the guide. There we go. And the other thing is to make sure that it, it will turn. You don't want to get it overheated. That doesn't want to turn so well, so I'm going to back that off. There we go. Now I have a free movement of that chain and it's still plenty tight. We'll continue along. So that's our final cut. Now I'm going to unplug this so we don't make any uh, accidental cuts on living tissue. So, well, that was a real work saver. Uh, I've got my through cut made, as you can see right here. It's gone all the way through. But this is a perpendicular cut that we've made with that chain mortiser. It's actually got to be cut at a with a dovetail so that rotate this over carefully without getting my hands in the way and uh, I don't want to land on my framing square this this cut right here this is the high side of the dovetail and uh, that high side will meet up with a cut to the cut that's going to be made at the same height as the shelf. So in other words, the 12 inch, the 12 inch beam will fit from this, from this juncture, from this line right here, down to the shelf, and it will slide in at the top and drop in. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut from this, from this shoulder of the uh, mortise, straight back at a downward angle, heavy stuff mortise right here below the mortise being very careful I should be exactly one and a half inches below the mortise so I'm making my mark with the uh, knife double check Always confirm what you're doing so that you don't have any mistakes or boo-boos. Make sure that you're measuring from the right from the right measuring point, reference point. Now that I have that, 
I can begin. Now you might say, uh, how in the world do I know? Well, basically, uh, you, you just cut away a little bit of wood on the, on the high side of this side and cut it at a, cut it at more or less a uh, hump and then just gradually straighten it out with a, with a straight edge. So we need to lay that out. with my framing square. From three inches to five inches. You wanna have a good sharp chisel, razor sharp. So now, take away small amounts of wood at a time. I want to meet that, that back corner over there. I don't want to get too, too aggressive. I'll deepen those shoulder cuts. Well, the heat's starting to pour on now. It'd be a hot, steamy day. I'll take this over uh, the foot of snow that we'll be getting in a few months. See if I have any humps in it. I do. I have a hump in the middle of that I've got to clean up. We'll do that with the slick. Put this back before it gets dropped. Wouldn't be good for my toe either if it should drop on. This is a marvelous instrument. This will shave paper thin. That's that's end grain, and that end grain is going to be hard as iron. Um, it's nice and flat, but that end grain is hard as iron when that meets up with the dovetail, which is the uh, the length of the grain. Uh, that's going to compress a little bit with the driving the wedge in at the top, and it's going to be a hardwood oak wedge. This two by uh, one and a half, and uh, it's a long wedge that will be driven in and then cut off at each end. So that's it, and I'm going to continue to load up another uh, post, and we'll continue and start laying that one out. have to be part wrecker operator in order to do this stuff.
here. Well, Benny's having a great time. He'll be under shade pretty soon, be underneath the deck and uh, keeping out of this hot sun, and I don't blame him. But this gives you an idea of what this uh, construction project is all about. I really wish to thank my Patreon donors uh, for your, for your uh, fantastic support. Uh, some of that money has gone towards purchasing the chisels that I need to uh, erect this project and uh, bring you this video. So uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, how many more of these episodes I'm going to be doing. There's Benny running around. <laughs> he, he just loves it out here. He's doing so great. But uh, thank you for watching, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I'm producing one of these videos. God bless.